Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session. My name is Greg Brown, and I'm joined here today by Rob Lacey. Hello. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> uh, together, <laughs> we're going to show a couple of new ways that Onshape is expanding and unlocking new engineering workflows for you, our customers. The agenda today is pretty straightforward. I'll start with a few words about Onshape as a product development platform and how it's continuing to extend wider and deeper in its reach and functionality. Then Rob is going to talk about PCB Studio, which is our new ECAD MCAD collaboration capability. Then I'm going to talk about our frames, which is a now a native part of Onshape's part studio environment. We're going to show some demos along the way and talk a little bit about our future and our vision for what comes next. I'll probably mention this a couple of times during the session as well, but if you do have questions along the way, please use the Q&A system that is part of the Social 27 platform that you're logged into. We'll collect these questions and try to address as many of them as we can as possible. If we can't get to them all, then we'll reply back to you directly. So with that being said, let's get started. Now, Onshape's journey to becoming the leading cloud-native product development system, integrating CAD, PDM, and Workflow has been and continues to be an exciting one. We have a particular focus now, as you might have noticed lately over the last few releases, to really concentrating on delivering more depth to our core tool sets of modeling and drawings. But we are also actively extending the reach or the breadth of our platform too to enable whole new workflows and functional areas and extend into new collaborations. In other words, the footprint of Onshape is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Today, we're going to show you this in a couple of ways. PCB Studio, which brings new breadth to the platform, and Frames, which adds important depth to core modeling of Onshape. So over to you, Rob, to talk about PCB Studio. Thanks, Greg. Well, as Greg mentioned, my name's Rob Lacey and I'm leading the development of PCB Studio here at Onshape. Um, so today I'm gonna to briefly outline what PCB Studio is and why you should use it. Um, then Greg's gonna do the hard work and walk us through a, a demo of the system in action to show us how it, how it actually looks and behaves. And then finally, we're gonna take a few look at a, a few of our future plans for PCB Studio and where we're going next with it. Next slide, please, Greg. So what actually is PCB Studio? Um, well, it's a bi-directional link between Onshape and ECAD or electrical CAD systems, um, as they're usually known, that are used for printed circuit board design. So this isn't for sort of schematic, uh, for electri electronic design, sort of cabinet design. We're talking about printed circuit board design here. Um, so for example, uh, an Onshape user designing a consumer product could create a part describing the shape of a printed circuit board within their Onshape assembly. And then they could send this design to an ECAD system via PCB Studio in a format that their ECAD system will understand. The electrical engineer will then have the basic design constraints they need to work with, um, such as the shape of the board, the holes, and any areas they need to keep clear of components or areas where they need to include components. The EE can then update that design in their ECAD system. They can add components, adjust the board shape, and send it back via PCB Studio to Onshape again, which in turn creates an updated Onshape assembly. If necessary, the Onshape user can subsequently modify that design and send it back to ECAD again, and so on and so forth until both sides are happy. So we're ending up with this back and forth to Onshape design interchange, kind of as we've tried to indicate by those slides at the bottom, by the images at the bottom of the slide there. We've got this loop where we're going from ECAD to Onshape and from Onshape to ECAD. In order to do this, PCB Studio is using common interchange formats, um, including the IDF data format, which some of you may be, be familiar with. It's been around for a, a very long time. Um, and IDX, which is a much newer, but more detailed format. We're supporting IDX baselines at the moment. Um, so what this means is PCB Studio is, is compatible with pretty much every ECAD system out there because all of them produce IDF files and the vast majority of them produce IDX files. The last point um, on the slide there is important to note one thing that PCB Studio isn't. It isn't a standalone ECAD or PCB design system. Uh, 
So you'll still need to use it in conjunction with an ECAD system, such as those from Altium, Mental Graphics, Cadence, or others. PCB Studio is intended to be the link between ECAD and those systems, between Onshape, sorry, and those systems. It's not designed to replace those systems. So that's the basic theory. We're talking about a link between ECAD systems used for schematic design and Onshape that's bi-directional, works both ways. So that's the theory. I'll hand you back to Greg, and he's going to do the hard work of walking through how it actually works in practice. Greg, over to you. Thanks, Rob. So let's have a look at how you might use PCB Studio in this example studio. Now, note we're still in beta, so things may look a little different as we continue to make changes, but I'd like to start this scenario in Onshape. In the mechanical designer's shoes, and what we want to do here is design a flight control system for this remote control glider. Now this guy's pretty big, it's a five meter wingspan, so it probably could use some computer controls. And we'll put this controller inside the fuselage around about here. So I'm just laying this out at a high level to see if there's enough space. I have a standard off the shelf housing for this flight computer that I'd like to use. And I can get a sense that this will fit nicely in this space ahead of the undercarriage here. Now, Taking a closer look at the housing that I'll use for this project, I can see it consists of a base and a lid and some end plates. And if I peel off the lid, you see I've made a rough outline of a PCB, as well as some geometry that represents keep out zones for this design. Now, the idea behind this is from a mechanical designer's point of view, I've created a baseline, an initial concept that I'm working with, and I can now move over to the PCB Studio environment right here in Onshape. The first thing I'll do is start the collaboration process uh, with my ECAD partners, and I'll do that by bringing the conceptual PCB in. PCB Studio will act as a bridge between the mechanical and ECAD worlds. So now that I've got it in here, I can look at the bill of materials inside the P and, and see that the PCB and the keep out zones are all correctly represented. My next step is to share this information back to the ECAD world via the IDF format, which is a standard for most ECAD authoring tools, as Rob said, like Altium Designer, Eagle, and so on. So now the ECAD group is busy laying out the PCB tracks and placing components according to their schematics for the electronics design. And meanwhile, I can go ahead with some of my own mechanical design work. When the ECAD group has a new design for me and they are ready to collaborate again, I simply go back into PCB Studio's environment and synchronize their new IDF data. As you can see, the PCB Studio is acting as the bridge between ECAD and MCAD worlds. After this data is synchronized, you'll see some very interesting things. For example, many of the components that they have placed, you'll see detailed representations for. Now these are actually on shape parts that I have previously mapped and stored in a library. PCB Studio recognizes and reuses their footprint and path designations. I can have a look at this updated bill of materials now, and I can see the reference designation as per the ECAD design, along with part names and values. If I select the large microcontroller package, you can see details on it and the fact that it is linked to this on-shape part, which I have in a shared on-shape folder, usable by my colleagues. Now, if I look at the keep out zones, which if you remember, I created these up front and I can tell PCB Studio that I don't really need a 3D model for them. Just show me the holes left in the PCB. And now that this initial collaboration and integration with the ECAD designers is complete, I can get on with my own mechanical design. I'll use an on-shape representation of this in a new assembly incorporating the detailed components in their correct locations and of course the PCB itself. And I can use this assembly in further processes downstream. I'll use some regular on-shape modeling techniques, perhaps like grouping the instances together. And then what I'm going to do is I'll swap the original concept PCB out and replace it with this populated detailed design. Here I'm using replace instance command for my assembly. 
Again, just swapping the old one out and replacing it with the detailed one. And now you can see it's updated and we can get a good sense of where the other key interfaces and connections are. Now that I have this assembly, I can put the lid back on again and start to have a look at the fit between the various components. If I have a look at this assembly from this end and remove one of the panels, you'll see there's an interference between the connector and the rib on the housing. Now, this is obviously not what we want. So to address this, I'm going to have to suggest an edit to the position of the connector and then have the ECAD folks make changes to the PCB. Obviously, this will involve changing the layout of the tracks and possibly moving some of the other components around. You know, this is their responsibility in their ECAD software. I'll get that going right here by editing the assembly. Now, I think if we have a look at the connector here, it looks like there's enough room for me to move it about two millimeters. Uh, remember, this is me, the MCAD guy, suggesting the change. So to keep this in sync, I'll move back to the PCB Studio environment where I can incorporate my suggested changes to that assembly. And then I'll provide that back to the ECAD team so they can make the appropriate updates in their software. Now, after the ECAD team has made modifications to their PCB layout, I can once again incorporate those changes using PCB Studio to synchronize the IDF data with my assembly. Once I bring that in, we'll see how the components and the associated vias have changed, and presumably the ECAD team is happy now with the design. We've closed the loop and we've got to where we need to be. Now we of course could continue this iterative collaborative process in order to arrive at the final design that satisfies both mechanical and ECAD requirements. But for me, perhaps I'd like to go further and use in-context editing on the housing so that I can create some cutouts to give the connectors some space for the wiring so that it can be wired and plugged in. I'll use the underlying assembly to create the context, which is a reference for me to build such cutouts around, knowing that should the PCB and assembly be modified again, then I can simply update the context and the features will be aligned perfectly. Now, this was just a small demonstration of how PCB Studio could be used to bring the ECAD and MCAD teams together. As I mentioned, it's still in the beta, so some things may look a little different when you get to try it. So Rob, can you take us through some thinking about the future vision for PCB Studio? I certainly can. Thanks, Greg. Um, so yeah, as you saw, that's what PCB Studio does now. And I hope you'll agree that if you design products, including circuit boards, then it's going to be a, a very useful tool. But this is only really the start of what we want to do in this space. Um, the first area we're looking at is getting more detail into the on-shape PCB models, including copper, silkscreen, and flex information when it's available in the ECAD file. Um, Greg in his demo there was using IDF, which as a file format doesn't have a lot of information in it, but with formats like IDX, um, we should be able to get this information across into one shape. Um, a PCB in a cell phone, for example, is now likely to be uh, a rigid flex board manufactured. So it's manufactured uh, in, a, in a flat form and then folded to fit in the enclosure. Um, we're currently working with ECAD partners to look at how we can collaborate on these more complex designs within Onshape. Um, another area we're looking at in order to make the detail of the models better is we're looking at adding more standard component libraries to Onshape for users wanting to use detailed 3D models rather than the simple shapes that are, in, that are created automatically. You saw in Greg's demo, we had some simple shapes in there. Those simple component shapes were created automatically from the ECAD data from the footprint data that came from ECAD and the detailed shapes, Greg had already gone into the library in PCB Studio and said, I want to use this more detailed model. Well, what we're planning on doing is putting a library of those detailed models in Onshape's existing standard content. So under the insert command in the assembly that you currently use to insert nuts, bolts, washers, that kind of thing, um, we're gonna be adding uh, electrical component models and a whole host of other models as well for, for other areas of Onshape, not just for PCB Studio. The next area is one where we already have a huge advantage, of course, and that's, and that's the cloud. Um, Greg showed PCB Studio importing and exporting ECAD files, but, um, and as most ECAD systems are still file-based, then obviously 
you know, that's functionality will continue to support. But the exciting thing, however, is ECAD is also moving to the cloud slowly, but undeniably towards the cloud. So we're already working with ECAD partners uh, on cloud ECAD, MCAD data exchange. So no files, just log in uh, and browse the ECAD system from within Onshape and then bring that ECAD data across and synchronize it. Um, and that's a very exciting development, something we're already looking at and working on actively. Um, and it's not just board information you can exchange in this way. We're looking at exchanging other ECAD data, such as costing information, supplier information, compliance, um, life cycle and obsolescence information either, it, 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 as well. So you know if a, a component is you know, going to go out of date. Um, so that's a very exciting area we're looking into. Finally, another really interesting area that we're beginning to investigate with this is machine learning, um, which is another advantage of being on the cloud. As you saw in Greg's demo, um, users can select a, a detailed on-shape model to represent a certain ECAD footprint. But how do you know which model to use, especially if you're a mechanical engineer without a great knowledge of components? So what we're doing is by analyzing and learning from the choices made by others, we're hoping to offer recommendations of which component you should maybe use based on decisions that other users have used. And that's a really exciting area to explore. So that's kind of a quick overview of the future. We're going to summarize um, both on Frames and PCP Studios and take sessions about both at the end, take questions, sorry, about both at the end. Um, but now I will hand you back to Greg, who's going to talk about the exciting new Frames functionality in Onshape. Greg. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, it's, it's the, so PCB Studio is really exciting as it is today, but you know, obviously the future is very, very exciting too. And um, yeah, can't wait for that. So shifting focus back to the core modeling capabilities of Unshape, let's talk about frames. In the next few minutes, I'll give you a quick overview of frames, specifically you know, what they are and what they do. Um, some of the key capabilities of the new frames tool set. And of course, I'll give a quick demo um, and then say a few words about the, the vision we have for the future. So frames in Onshape let you quickly and efficiently create products that are constructed from sections such as tubes or standard cut extruded sections and joined together using you know, welding or other fastening techniques. You can see these kinds of products and structures all around the place. For example, in laboratory shelving or workstations or furniture, or in factories, as seen here with materials handling equipment, uh, like this conveyor support structure. Or maybe in a welded chassis for an off-road buggy, or the roll cage for a race car. And while it's possible to create such products using standard sketch and sweep and extrude type approaches, it's far more efficient to use a dedicated tool set for this. Uh, Frames and Onshape extends the part studio modeling environment with a suite of native features dedicated for this purpose. Now, some of you, in fact, many of you, have been using the Beams custom feature to do this type of modeling in Onshape. And just as a side note, the Beams custom feature has been a wonderful example of the power of custom features written in feature script as a way to deliver valuable capabilities to Onshape users in a timely fashion. But the time has come to take this capability even further, to, to rethink it and to make it a native part of Onshape's part studio. So as mentioned, you'll find frames up in the part studio toolbar. Now, there are a few different capabilities that I want to talk about. First, the frames feature is designed to be a highly interactive one. You can achieve a lot in this single dialogue and interactively manipulate the frame as it's being built. Things like choosing the profile, adjusting the orientation and placement of the profile, or defining the corner treatments and the end trims. It's all very easy and efficient. There's a powerful new cut list capability too, where individual segments of a frame or the whole frame itself can be defined into a cut list for documentation or reporting purposes. We also, and I'll show this shortly in the demo, create a composite part of this cut list so that it can be easily instantiated into an assembly as a single bomb item or placed on a drawing. And speaking of drawings, we've added support in the form of cut list tables and associated callouts so that you can create clear and accurate documentation showing items, quantity, the standard and the profile and other frame segment dimensions uh, with ease. 
In terms of profiles for making frames, we have a new profile library capability, which provides standards out of the box, along with a mechanism for you to use your own custom profiles. And finally, while the frame feature already allows for powerful options for corner types and trimming, there's an additional frame trim tool, which allows for more sophisticated operations, uh, for example, on ordered groups of frames. Uh, but enough with the bullet points. <laughs> Let me show you a quick demo. Okay, let's have a quick look at this new frames capability and how they can be used for a design like this, for the driver protection cage in a land speed racing vehicle. Something like you might see in the famous Bonneville Salt Flats. I'll start by rolling back a little bit and show you how I created a skeleton for this. It's pretty simple. I used a few different techniques such as 3D solids and curves and sketches and splits to give myself a skeleton upon which I'm going to build this frame. I also made it easy to change by defining key variables that control the main sketches and features. Here I'll edit the angle of the front of the roll cage and you'll see that it updates nicely. Now I'll jump forward down the feature list just a little bit and you can see I have a couple of frames created. I'll bring them back into view and now I'll show you how easy it is to create some new ones. The new frame tool set is up there on the toolbar and you start by choosing the profile for the frame. We include a number of standards like 8020, AISC, ANSI, AS and ISO. And a lot of these have associated profile types. Uh, for example, if I look at the 8020, there's a bunch of different uh, sizes and profiles that are listed here. But today I'll just use an ANSI round tube of a certain diameter and a wall thickness. And in this case, maybe I'll look for a 49,000 um, wall thickness. Now I can select the entities on the skeleton where I want the frame to be. It's as simple as that. We have some other neat tools in this frame feature right here. It's all very interactive. I can shift the position of the profile relative to the edge of the skeleton. And in the same feature, I can limit the start and the end position of the frame. Here, I'm going to use some of the other surrounding frame parts uh, at the top and the end, and then on the other side as well, uh, to automatically trim the ends of my new frame segment. So that's a very basic look at creating a frame part. If I want to do something a little bit more sophisticated, I can start with the same round profile, and then I'll use this diagonal edge. And again, I'll set the limits to trim the part, but this time I'll use a whole bunch of existing frames. And you'll see now when I isolate this frame, um, you'll see how nice the, the clean the end trims are. Now, if I go back to one of the earlier frame features that we did, you'll see that I used a couple of different corner definitions up. Now at the top of the, uh, where these, you can see these, these blue frames here. At the top, you can see I've used the none type. So there's no corner defined, but I can easily edit this to be a different type like mitered or a butt or even a coked butt joint. And I can interact with this just exactly um, as I desire. You can see here, I can adjust the, the angle or the, the direction of this butt joint and the coping is, is updating correctly. It's a very interactive experience and you can really quickly get to, to what you want there. Now, I'm gonna set these corners back to a none type again and introduce uh, the other feature which we can use to do even more sophisticated trims. So here there's no corner uh, treatment and I'm going to use the frame trim feature. This is going to allow me to create ordered groups of entities uh, upon which I can trim against. So I'm going to select all these gray side frames into a single group. And then I'm going to trim the blue frame segments against that. It allows me to do a lot in this single feature with predictable and robust results. Again, if I isolate this frame segment, you'll see the nice end trim uh, very cleanly uh, that we just created there. Now, 
if we finish that and jump to the end of the model, you can see I used the same frame and frame trim features on a few more of these edges in order to complete the frame design. Let's test that a little bit. Uh, let's make some changes to the design. Perhaps I'll adjust the chassis height and the roll cage height. I like to do this using the variables table and note the new description column in the variables table. It's a great way to assist yourself in, in this process as well. We see the whole model updates correctly. And of course, the trims uh, of all of those frame segments updates correctly as well. Nice clean on there. I'll make one more change, perhaps to the front angle of the roll cage, change it back to five degrees, and you'll see that that updates uh, perfectly as expected as well. Now, the final step for me is to document this, and I'll do that, I'll create a cut list. I can select specific frame elements. For example, here I'll choose the ones in the top rollover cage and create the something called rollover. I can create as many different cut lists as I like. Maybe one that includes all the frame segments or just certain things like the, the, the seat back um, support. We can look at these cut lists in a slide out panel. As I scroll down, you can see that the last one I created is called Rollover. The customizable and interactive, or well, you can see uh, cross highlighting there. The display shows the item reference, the quantity of identical items, the standard description, and other dimensional things like length and the angle of the entrance. Of course, you can customize the display of these columns. Now, when a cut list is created, we can automatically create a, uh, a composite part containing the frames we chose. And with this composite part, we can do some interesting things. For example, I could assign a material to this. I'm going to choose from a material library, I'm going to make a, say, a 4130 steel. And then once I've got material property of that, I'm going to check the mass properties of that. So here for our rollover cut list, you see it's 3.2 kilograms. Now, a further advantage of this is that when I wish to create a drawing of these segments of the frame, and I'll start with the blank sheet, I can just choose to insert a view of that composite part, which came from the cut list. Perhaps down here in the corner, I'll place an isometric view of the rollover. Now the cut list we defined earlier is easily accessible to us here in the drawing environment via the new cut list table. You're going to see the very same columns of information, the standard the profile dimensions are shown here in the new cut list table. Now let me just clean it up a little bit. I won't spend too much more time in here, but I do actually want to show you how the callouts uh, can be associated specifically to this cut list. We have a property here specific to cut lists, for example, the, the item reference. I'll just pull a few of these off onto the side here and create the balloons. Yeah, we won't finish all of this. But I will show you one more thing. I would like to place a note uh, that's on the drawing. Maybe I'll put it, uh, no, maybe down the bottom there. And I'm going to refer to the property, the mass property that we had just extracted before from the, from the part. So here you'll see that you can correctly see that 3.2 kilograms for that um, roll over. Now, when it comes to making assemblies of frames, we have a couple of choices. We could include these composite parts, and in this case, the three cut list items that I had defined as instances in an assembly. When I look at the assembly bomb, you'll see just those three items are listed which might be useful in certain fabrication diagrams or maybe another drawing that you wish to create. You can see the bomb table up here now only has those three items. Now, alternatively, uh, we could of course choose to make an assembly based on individual frame segments. Each is their own bomb item. You can see here my assembly now consists of a large number of these frame segments. And the bill of materials, of course, represents that. So there's a great flexibility here and should cover a wide range of workflows using both composite parts or the individual parts as so desired.
Now, I'm sure you'll agree that the new frames tool set is a welcome addition to the core of Onshape. But like everything with Onshape, we'll continue to make improvements and bring in new capabilities as soon as they're ready. Now, some of the items on our list for extending frames even further are things like creating gussets and end caps. And while we're able to deliver a number of standard profiles as part of the built-in library today, similar to the concept of standard content, we are also looking to extend this even further to give users the ability to make shared enterprise libraries. And of course, many more things that we'll be happy to reveal to you as they get closer to being released. So perhaps now back to you, Rob, perhaps you can give us a few words on the release status of PCB Studio. Well, yeah, just to say it's currently in an early visibility uh, beta at the moment. So we've got quite a few uh, Onshape users using it currently who have been helping us out enormously. And if any are listening, thank you so much. We've, we've, we've had a great feedback so far, which has helped drive where we are now. Uh, we are looking for more users, more test users um, to get involved. So if it's something you think you're going to be interested in, then please get in touch with uh, your Onshape representative through the, through the usual channels, because it'd be great to get a few more people uh, involved. And then we're aiming for a full release later this year, hopefully fairly soon. The official line is as ever, it's ready when it's ready, but we're, we're, we're pretty close. Yeah, so thanks Rob. And as far as frames goes, I, I hope actually everyone's already seen this. Um, it's, it was in the release that we shipped two weeks ago, uh, back on the 18th of February. And if you haven't, then you probably should go back and, and take a look at the What's New forum post and then try it for yourself. So to wrap this all up, and before we get to some of your questions, um, the footprint of Onshape is being extended both in depth and breadth, and will continue to do so in 2022 and beyond. As such, it will deliver more value to existing users, as well as engage new and extended design teams with the power and benefits only Onshape can provide. PCB studios will open up great new opportunities for Onshape's MCAD designers to collaborate with the ECAD design teams. Frames extends the core modeling toolset of Onshape to bring new levels of productivity and efficiency, along with standards you reuse for producing frame structures. And we're really looking forward to seeing your successes with all this and getting your feedback on these new capabilities. And with that, we'd like to say thank you for attending today, but we do have a few minutes uh, to take some of your questions. Um, Matt, I know that you're out there and you're seeing a bunch of questions coming in. Uh, is it possible for you to share some of them with us now? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you guys, great job. I have a number of questions. We'll try to get to as many as we can. Sure. Uh, but here's a question from, from Ben. I'm gonna go ahead and publish it. Uh, in regards to the PCB Studio, you cannot find it in the App Store. Uh, is it looking in the right place? Well, it's not there yet. It's, it's available in the App Store for, uh, we, we have to switch it on our end, basically. So if, you, if it is something you're interested in, then like I say, get in touch and we'll, we should be able to switch it on for you. We're looking for, for more test users so we can make it available to you. It's currently, it's implemented by the App Store. Uh, in future, it won't be. It will be uh, like Render Studios just appeared. So when you go to the Add Element button, it will appear eventually when it's fully released in the Add Element, but at the moment it's under the App Store for selected users. Okay, great. Uh, here's a question uh, from John. Uh, can you use sheet metal with the cut list? So the, the cut list is specific to the frame features. Um, in fact, so uh, that is you know, part of the new tool set uh, that, that's there for the frames. Yeah. Okay. Uh, related to cut with, uh, the cut length, uh, is the cut length the maximum length, including the finished treatments? Yes, so we will, um, yes, we calculate that automatically. So for curved and strangely shaped numbers as well, we have some pretty sophisticated ways that we're calculating that long, that length. And, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, with, the, with the introduction of frames, are there plans to implement 3D sketches? Um, yeah, so 3D sketches is on our plan. Um, yeah, we don't have an exact date for that. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about this as being in the sort of the nearer term um, on our radar. But as 
as Rob has sort of indicated, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about it when, when we're ready to. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so one more on frames here. How, how are custom profiles added? Ah, that's a good question. So today we ship a number of standards, uh, the ones that I listed before, but it's absolutely not limited to that. If you have your own specific standard that you wanted to, to use, uh, you can create your own um, part studio uh, with those frame profiles in it. And we have a, a, um, a capability, and I, you might have seen it when I used the pull down there, which is called a, a tag profile. So you can tag the sketch in the part studio that defines that profile and tag it with standards and, and description and, and other sort of customizable metadata. And then when you use that, uh, you, it'll actually show up in the cut list and the, and the drawings um, as expected. So, you know, you could do that and then you could create a document that you share with your colleagues or um, that you reuse from, uh, from project to project. But, but they say, that being said, you know, we do have plans to continue to extend uh, the list of standards that we do support. Uh, great. Let's see, I'm looking at the questions here, looking for uh, some other ones. Um, in regard to the uh, PCB studios, uh, will, we, will, we, will we be supporting any link to LTM Vault or other PDM-like tools to, to sync designs? Yes, hopefully down the line. We'll be, um, in term, with, with reference to Altium, Altium 365 is probably the first thing we'll be looking to connect to because it's cloud-based. So we should be able to, that, that's something somewhere we're, we're very interested to see if we can get data directly from Altium 365 in order to do kind of basically uh, cloud to cloud ECAD to MCAD. But, um, but down, the, down the line, we'll be looking at seeing if we can get information out of Altium's uh, desktop tools as well. But Altium 365 will be the first place we're planning to start with Altium. We also support IDF, of course, which is, we, we support uh, IDF, which is the standard file format for Al that Altium uses, along with, you know, every other ECAD system out there. But certainly with Altium, we're also looking at their native file format too, to see if we can get um, more detailed designs out of Altium, because we know there's a very large overlap between Onshape's users and Altium's users. So it's one of the systems that, we're not, you know, that we're trying to, to see if we can get more, more data out of faster, basically. Great, thank you. Uh, here's a question from, from Daniel. Uh, will, there, will there be a PCB simplification feature to allow better performance in larger assemblies, uh, similar to the fixed PCB custom feature that is available now? Yes, possibly. I mean, you can use fixed PCB kind of with the assemblies it produces. Um, at the moment, it produces assemblies. Um, you do have the flexibility to either use the simple shape as you saw in Greg's demo, where some components were very simple shapes. Um, and that's where it uses shape from the ECAD data. Um, and that's great in that it gives you a nice, fairly lightweight assembly where you can use those shapes. So if you want to do an analysis on it, or you're just after a simple bounding box, then that's a really efficient way to go. Obviously, if you want something photorealistic or space constraints are really critical, then you can put the detailed models in it. Um, what it does in every case is it doesn't rebuild models it already has. So the first time you build a board with it, you know, with 500 components, it might take a while because it's got to build 500 new on-tape models to represent those components. But if you subsequently built the new board or a derivative, the same board or a derivative of it, you wouldn't, it wouldn't rebuild all those components again. So in terms of performance, it will actually get faster the more you use it because it will have a, it will build up its own library. Um, so yeah, so at the moment we're, it's only building assemblies, but it can build either simple assemblies or complex assemblies. Um, one other thing we're planning on adding to it, which isn't there yet, um, is the ability to do filtering, where if the ECAD data contains, for example, loads of tiny components, you know, loads of tiny surface mount components, you might have thousands of resistors, um, you could filter those out. So they appear in the preview in PCB Studio, but aren't in your eventual uh, on-shape assembly. Then when you sync back from Onshape to the ECAD, we'll add that data back in again. So it's not permanently lost, but you'll end up in Onshape with a simpler assembly if that's what you want. So, so that's on the roadmap too, definitely. Okay, I had a question here that was, um, so I have, I have many designs that use the Beams custom feature. Uh, converting them to new frames should be simple. 
is that uh, I, I guess the question is is how does how does the how do frames impact the beams custom feature that we've used for years? All right, so there's obviously going to be a, a transition period that we we understand, and you know we're not making it backward compatible. Uh, it's not automatically just taking all of that work. If you have frame parts already there, um, they will appear in a cut list, but they can they can be chosen to appear in a cut list. But we're not going to calculate the the end trim um, dimensions and the lengths in the same way that we would have if we if we have the, the new native. So you know this is a necessary thing in order to move on to the new uh, the new code base and, and the new capabilities. Okay, thank you, Greg. Um, let's see. Let's. Um, I may have one or two more questions. Let me just go ahead and look at the at my list. Um, are there? Yeah, are there are there plans for PCB Studio to eventually reach a standalone state, which I would imagine that would be a full PCB design tool. No, not currently. Um, no, the view is at the moment it would always be a um, it will always be you know a bridge between ECAD systems and and on shape. So no, there aren't currently any plans plans to do that. It'd be lovely to get to that state eventually, but but no, not currently. It's, it's, it's certainly not on the current in the current plans. Okay. Um, how about in the in in frames? Can tubes contain bends? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, you can whatever the underlying geometry that you choose, um, they can be bent, yeah. And I guess uh, related, uh, can, can we add material to custom profiles so the weights are calculated correctly? Um, that's not currently what we have, but there's a lot of things like that that are on our list. Okay. All right, it sounds like we're about the, near the end of things. Um, once again, on behalf of Rob and myself, thank you for taking the time to be with us here to this session. And we're both looking forward to, to, to seeing and hearing of your experiences with these new exciting capabilities in Onshape. Definitely. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you everyone. <laughs>